Good morning and welcome. Thank you for being here. What a beautiful day we have here on Valentine's Day, and I hope that you are spending some time with your loved ones. But most of all, and most importantly, loving on yourself. So aging is inevitable, <laughs> yet wisdom is not. And we are here to learn a little bit more about how to love ourselves. So I'm Anne Heiser, your movement motivation specialist and agent of change. I'm an original aerobosaurus from the 80s, and I came to America for the first time in 1987 to become certified as a group fitness instructor. 34 years later, I'm still so grateful to be loving what I do, and this April, I celebrate my 60th birthday, an age that at one point I doubted I would reach. I uh, didn't really want to, and I'm happy to say I overcame a debilitating mental illness at the age of 45 that lasted almost seven years. Look at me uh, squirming in my seat. <laughs> but I'm so grateful to be where I am now, and I know my strategies work to change the way you age and really look after yourself. So there's never been a more critical time for every single one of us to take care of ourselves. We have to practice self-care as a responsibility and we are, no, we are more responsible right now in these times for our own health and for taking our physical future into our own hands than ever before. So if we are not taking care of ourselves, who will? And we are responsible for all the energy we bring to every situation as uh, everywhere you go, there you are, right? <laughs> so I want to just read a quick quote from Cardine Martinez. And she says, the love of self is setting boundaries knowing where you end and the rest of the world begins. Because if you lose sight of that line, you lose yourself and become a reflection of what everyone else wants you to be. <laughs> so if you want to add in the chat there anything that you, you know, if you just identify with that, it would be great to just connect on that level. Okay, so we all here, yeah, we all going through this cosmic soup of the situation at the moment. And so what is our strategy? What is our mindset about self-care? I know I come from a personal uh, social structure of when I grew up where self-care was selfish. Okay, so if you took care of yourself first, you were like regarded as selfish, right? That was uh, something that we always identified with. And, you know, if you think about it, when you are selfish enough <laughs> to take care of yourself, that is when you can be present, bring your best energy and contribute as much of what you've learned in your situation and I believe that is personally my responsibility to share as a lot of people would never believe that uh, <laughs> I have been through this you know well that I dug for myself and again you know it, it's our belief right I believe that 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 was my my reality at the time and as we all act on our beliefs we become aware of something and then it becomes a very huge consciousness. And then we decide how we want to feel and act on the knowledge that we understand about whatever it is that we're challenged with. So whether it's a weight loss goal or a fitness goal or even a business goal, any kind of goal at all, it's about discovering what our motivations are and how we interpret things. So. Self-care, if you, if you really think about, you know, in our society, what are we looking at? Massages, bubble baths, excellent nutrition, maybe vacations, spending time on your hobbies, doing something that you want to 
do for fun and not income. Uh, exercise could be doing shopping, you know, things like that. But really and truly, we can look at things like really just a basic again, and I'll just beg you all to have proper hydration. I'm going to take a quick sip. Sipping water throughout the day as per my hero, Sue Hitzman. Um, setting boundaries. How about learning from your triggers? How about just crying and screaming, which I did quite a bit of this last week. <laughs> Getting proper rest, which I didn't do a lot of this week. <laughs> meditation. Okay. I endeavored to do more meditation this week. Maybe trauma healing. Something that had affected me for 17 years came up and hit me in the physical, sitting outside in my field for a while, 17 years, and then boom. So purging negativity and letting go of attachments and even excess belongings, you know, just spring cleaning your home, getting rid of things that don't make you excited, okay? And um, Trace, I know that you're on that, like a champ. And, of course, uh, as, as we were having a look and Tracy was on a Skype call with me as I walked Sammy the other day, and um, I showed him my atomic habits. So I get on a rock and I get on a bench, once each side, twice a day, walking on the park with Sammy. And sometimes he'll get a walk twice a day. So I'll just do it again. And they're just little atomic habits, and I'll just go for as long as I can in my arm balance for each side. And that's all I do. And, you know, it's just a great little tiny, tiny thing that we can add to our habits. So, moving on. Um, what? How does taking care of yourself make you feel, though? Do you feel proud and happy that you took care of yourself or a little bit guilty? Oops. And um, perhaps, ooh, you know, like you feel like you got away with it, you know, something like that. So even just changing that and just going, wow, you know, because I love myself so much, I'm going to really do something. What do I want it the most? Like, how can I treat myself like my very own Valentine? <laughs> okay, breath work and grounding. So this is my strategy number two. And the strategy number one, of course, was, and I'll send you guys the outline, of course, uh, was just being mindful, like understand looking from a little uh, distance as an observer at how your at your situation, you know, is it true, all those things, asking a few questions over there, what is our mindset, so that's strategy number one, and then two, breath work and grounding, so interesting, I was reading, I'm reading a book right now called uh, The, Ve you know, Vegas Nerve, about the Vegas Nerve, and just Breathing consciously for like a few minutes, a few minutes will completely bring you into the present moment and change your state by affecting your um, central nervous system immediately, immediately. So maybe as, as, as you're sitting, wherever you're sitting right now, whether it's on the floor, I'm sitting on the floor presently because it's my favorite place to sit. Um, I'm in a really, really strange position from the bottom down, but I'm not going to let you see that. We're just going to focus on pretty much the hips up. And I just want you to think about for a second the biggest balloon ever and put it inside your center, your middle, and just let it sit there like a balloon. And then when you blow into the balloon, it's like more like a suck. Because you're going to suck in and just go as wide as you can. I want you to go as quick as you can for the count of two. And then a little moment of hesitation before you blow out for the count of four. And we're going to just do that three times. Okay, so it's just really easy. It's going to count two. Go big, 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 stop. And then blow it out for the count of four. So you got to obviously like, you know, time it out. Okay, so here we go. One, two, one, two.
Okay. So you will have felt a little bit of a tingle. You, you're focusing on something, so you're very, very present, and that's a really good way to take yourself out of a state of perhaps overwhelm and just bring yourself back straight away. The other grounding that I mentioned, simple as anything. I know you can't do this right now, Tracy, but it is all about putting your bare feet on the dirt. So maybe you can even go get a little tiny little cat box of sand and dirt <laughs> and stick it like by the door so that you can quickly go stand in there and ground yourself, okay? But bare feet, uh, as we'll learn right now when we go to, we're doing great with time, when we go to the chair real quick, uh, to pushing those feet down, spreading the toes and actually lengthening them as you spread them into the dirt, even you can even just wiggle it a little bit, like we do in the sand, so that it like closes over us, and then sit there for three minutes, power posing it, right, and telling them what you want. <laughs> You'll stay calm. All right. So, how do you wind down after a challenging day? If you had to rate your stress level on a one to ten scale, right now, how about now? Have it now. All right. Have it now. How about remembering an argument with somebody? Like, can you just pull up that same stress level right away if you start talking about it even? It's like in the past, but we can bring up those emotions to the day, which is something that we can either use to help us or hinder us. And the way that we help us is we go onto that chair and we remember that athlete that we used to have. And we understand that it's still there. And then we take action on the integrating of it. And that's where we get the key. That's where the key is. All right. How about remembering something like uh, if you, your stress level on a 1 to 10 scale, meeting your favorite rock star in person. How about that? <laughs> right? I mean, like, okay. So, yeah. Okay. So we've got the, the way in which we can pull the energy towards us and work it. All right. So what are we on? Strategy number three. And I put a little bit of information about the actual uh, vagus nerve there in your handout. And what to do about the, the breath exercises is there. And we are about to quickly have a five-minute demo of the grounded method. So. In your other handout that I'll send you, really getting into a little bit more detail about the Grounded Method, it's really about integrating the mind, body, and emotions for conscious reconnection. Okay, now we're talking about stuff you already know. This is where, like, really just bing to our entire movement history. So, guess what? The older you are, <laughs> the bigger your bank. The more you moved, the bigger your back. Maybe you are, and again, that could be bad and it could be good. But if you spent so many years just sitting, can you see those people that are out there that have done that? Can you see, you don't have to tell you how they've been sitting all their life because their whole body tells you. Or you see those 90-year-old Pilates instructors that are still carrying themselves like they do that, right? And that is why your body tells your story. Your body holds your story. Your body has all your whole emotions and you can tap into them in the way in which it becomes magical. Or as I did for, I'd say, around about seven years, tap into that dark, deathly place where you would have just said, yeah, I'll take me now, right? And again, when you have that situation where here we go in a deep conversation for a second, let's go here for a moment because this is where I did want to go today. And that is if you've really welcomed the end at any point or been told that the end is near, your perspective on that, on death, is very different very different after you've been through an experience like that, just like, you know. And I'm so, so grateful to be able 
still standing, still standing, here to share these things. As I turn 60 this year, and I understand how many people are struggling in this present circumstance of all kinds, right? Present circumstances excluded even. We have a responsibility not only to our families, to the rest of the planet, to be the best we can, to love ourselves because we're teaching people to how to treat us. And so I've decided to put together a 90-day experience. It's an intensive. It's about loving yourself but also Investing in your future, taking care of your own physical future with a plan, no matter what state it's in right now, and putting together all of these elements over 30 days, because we understand right now that 66 days is somewhere, is the place now, not 21, where you really get into habits and you really make a difference and you make a change. So, if any of this resonates with you, you guys are welcome to head over to my website and check it out a little further. But for Valentine's Day only today, I want to tell you you can bring a loved one. Bring a loved one on the experience with you and they will be added. So that is what we are going to do from March to the end of May. Now, if you're on the floor, and you haven't checked out the Heiser Maneuver, I sincerely hope you do. But I'm going to give you a quick little different one. Look at what we've been working on, Trace. It's called the toe hook. So if you're sitting here, you hook your toe on. You see your toe? I think we did it, man. Okay. And then you've been in my class before, so you know. So remember, you put your weights on your hands. Yeah. And then the leverage method. This is very advanced leverage here. So we're going to push up. See, I've got my toe hook. See, is it on there? Okay, you're going to drop through, push up high, lift your butt, boom. And then you're here. Perfect. Thank you. And then you said the chair was right now, but I moved the thing. Hold on. There. Okay. So, Tracy, you are already versed well, but we will go through this in just a moment. And this is why visualizations are so, so important. How's this view, Trace? Give me a, okay, cool, thanks. All right, so I actually have my toe socks on, what? Okay, good. Uh, I couldn't see your feet. Oh, uh, okay. So let's go down a bit. Okay, tell me how, how that is. How's my head? Head as well. Yeah, just your top of your head's not showing. If you go, okay. yeah. Okay. There we the go. Situation. <laughs> okay, so that's where I come back. All right, so part of, thanks a lot, Tetris. So part of what Grounded is, it's about you, the little tiny areas inside the body, and it's really an inside job. You will get a little handout about all the elements, and we'll, I'll break down a lot more in uh, the handout, but we're just going to go through three basics, three of the grounded basics. So the first thing we're going to do is the assumed position. Okay. The assumed position. So as we start the grounded program, anytime you sit in a chair, you pretty much get into that assumed position, which is being totally aware from the very bottom of your whole sole of your foot down to the very tippy ends of your toe pads, <sighs> all the way up your shin, along the back of your butt, your leg to your butt, up your spine, right the way to the crown, and then in between. So, the visualization here you want to think about is the floor is chocolate. Floor is chocolate. So I really teach my seniors when they are standing up to sit down to have a moment where they feel the chair proprioceptively behind their legs. So if you feel the chair and you know where it is, you don't have to check where it is anymore. 
You can really sit in it and then catch the knees. Catch. So once you've got your knees, and really hold them like you, you love them. And once you've got your knees, you can feel a little bit of a shelf there if you really push your butt out. Because guess what? You're going to sit on the chair. A lot of people sit like this. And they squat like this. But we want to really move. So mooning 101, mooning, and we're lowering. Boom. When you've sat in your chair, you want to feel a little overflow. Okay, at the back. If you don't have a little gap, that's fine, but just feel your butts right at the back and you've taken up as much of the room as possible. And here we go. So if you're sitting up straight and you feel your back all the way in the back rest, you're looking down to see your big toes. They're not perpendicular. Shins aren't perpendicular. And you can check. Let's have a look. Boom, boom, boom. You always check. Feet, foot, feet straight ahead and about a hip width apart. So if you need to, Feel your hips and just take your hands out and then there you go. Get out. Ready. All right. So you're going to just lift your toes up but push the, the um, forefoot down. Okay. And notice how your hands kind of like help. Do your hands help you to lift your toes up? <laughs> they help, right? That's great because they're connected. And then put them down like you're unrolling something long and they like stretch away from you but they push down at the same time take a breath and relax all right feel that chocolate ooze through your toes so that it closes over you on your ankle and then it's a set block and notice that super glue super glue people done all right perpendicular shins and then feel your butt on the chair on the chair like really push down, like if you have to like feel it, be heavy, as heavy as you can. <clears throat> All right. And then feel a slight squeeze of your body with your arms. Just squeeze your body very slightly. And notice if you squeeze them and reach down, ooh, there's your corset. Is it on? Can you feel it? Uh, and then put it on with your mind. So you're going to wrap that corset around. I had seniors who would use Velcro. I had seniors who would use little hooks or bows. It doesn't really matter what you visualize, but that is your picture of your corset. And then zip up your zip all the way from, see my zip, if I sit down like this, it's going to be all windy. But if I sit up tall, there it is. And then lastly, just let your elbows fall again. Push your head up into the crown that you're wearing. Take a nice deep breath and let's just go through that thing quickly again, all connected. Right, so gently we're going to focus back on the bottom of the soles and push down evenly while you're leaning back and your back is feeling like on the back rest, you feel it there. And Trace, you know this well. I know you do. All right, so it's just a squeeze and a release. Now, if you've got some music playing, you can do it to the music. You can hold and release. You can lift those two front legs of your chair very slightly, and you can even hover. But resist any, any one. Resist the temptation to lift any part of any of your feet. Part of any of your feet. Either one of your feet off the ground okay so just feel those toes pressing down and take a break and relax all right the slide the slide the slide so your back is still on the back rest in fact push it there so you feel it you can rub your shoulder blades so you know it's there and back in the assumed position you can hold the end of your knees see how nice it is it's like a perfect grip if you were in a rock climbing situation, this would be called a jug. Not really a jug, but it would be a really cool hold. So if you grab it, drop your shoulders, and just pull from your elbow. Can you see bringing your, your Superman badge towards me? Close your elbow and squeeze your newspapers too. Yeah, there it is. And push it back. All the way, yeah. Pull and push. So see, I'm like stretching out my fingers as wide as I can be, 
right? And pushing down and away. So I feel the abs, the lower back pressing onto the back breast. And then I'm going to grab it and pull it forward. And then and pull it forward. And all the time, I'm still being very aware of those chocolate feet. Feet in the chocolate box. Okay, so you're really feeling that. All right, so now we're going to relax and start to focus on lengthening one of our knees so the other one pulls back and touches the back wrist and the other one pulls away and then slowly switching and again those feet are totally stuck so one of the things that you would need here is obviously feet that don't slide you want to have either you know and as i said in the invitation for the event uh a chair that doesn't have wheels. There's lots of exercise for those chairs. Right? And so we're thinking nice and long, and then you relax. So that little man's starting to run around with his little hot oil can and getting into those nooks and crannies by now. And then we do the butt lift. Okay, so cheek to cheek, a whole new meaning, and this is going to bring us away from the back rest. And we can, the best example of this is airplane, live or die, right? Live, die. So we're going to do that same move and come away from the backrest. So we're pulling our backs away from the backrest and then we feel, wow, okay, now we can either sit up nice and tall and feel the shoulders down or there's a difference, right? And it's really about your Superman badge. All right, so we're staying there now. Push down on your knees this time so that your heels really don't lift because this time you're going to lift the butt cheek. Notice if your heels want to lift, it's okay, just push back down and then lift the butt cheek on the other side. And notice if you actually do nothing else, but just observe that as you bring your hip up, your elbows lock closer. There it is, anyway. And then you do it again. And just to share with you one of my favorite stories of my favorite lady, Evelyn, when I used to teach this class at La Vida. Is it like when you're going to fart? It's exactly like that. Right? So now act like you are going to fart and stop wobbling side to side, right? So you've closed the range of motion very much. <sighs> and you're actively pushing down with that elbow to meet the hip as it comes up and this can get pretty intense. Feel that corset really on fire, Trace? All right, and these movements, Seriously, these are the movements that can be done in high intensity because they're so small. And you can really watch, right, your form and go as quickly as you can. And you will get a burn right there in the place that it counts. Okay. So there's plenty more where that came from, and Tracy, you know. I'm going to use. Two ways to get up to show you guys. And again, sitting down, getting up on the floor, up again. All intentional. If you're not intentional, if you don't place things, no, understand, leverage, leverage. So we're pulling forward, remember? And we're pushing up. But as we push up, we're going to do that, right? Then... Let's do another one. So catch your knees. Move your way back. Lower yourself back. Good. That's that one. Let's do this one. So, and these are my favorite too. I love these little presses. Little presses. So you can go underneath your chair right there. All right, by your thighs. Okay. And then you're going to 
Lean forward. Feel your legs and your arms. Yep, and then do it all together. She works. All right, glasses. Any feedback for me? Ah, uh, Melissa couldn't get in. Huge apologies for anyone who could not get in today. And there is a replay for you. And I'll be doing it again next month. I will. It may have a different, little bit of a different flavor. However, that is going to be the gist of things, right? So, Trace, can you share with me anything that you know of? Do you like anyone else to know? And yeah, there you go. Well, basically, even just those few little <clears throat> little exercises on the chair are actually quite a workout. I mean, I can feel, I, I know my, my cheeks are red, aren't they? <laughs> I was getting warm in my long sleeve top. No, I know, but it's really, really such a good workout. And um, I must say, even for me with sitting, sitting at a desk most of the day, um, these, these little exercises really, really help me you know, just keep myself supple and keep my, my, my hips from getting too, too, um, what's the word, uh, tight. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Desk sentence, right? And yeah. since you're also a little bit more uh, experienced with working with me, um, you can also attest to the fact that any of these basics can be taken to any level that you want to go to. Okay, so of course. And I mean, that, that's, that's a whole great thing about it as well is, I mean, you can, you can really, you can do it like a, a intense workouts or you can just do user stretching and just getting yourself stretched. And the nice thing about it is you can do it anywhere. I mean, I do it in the kitchen. I do it walking to the kitchen. You know, I make sure I've got my spider suit on. I make sure, you know, I mean, <laughs> suit to mention it but yes, yes, <laughs> yes we will cover a lot more about this when we do further workshops but thanks Trace thanks so much for that lovely feedback and it was so lovely having your lovely smiley face <laughs> so thanks again for coming I'm going to end the recording now